remember waking up on my sixth birthday, going into the living room, and for the first time ever, I saw a Nintendo Entertainment System sitting in front of the TV. It was already hooked up, ready to go. I didn't even bother to see what game was in it. I just hit the power button, and then, holy shit, The Legend of Zelda. I was so amazed with the title screen that I didn't even pick up the controller. I just stared at it for five minutes. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why the hell would I get so crazy just over a title screen? Well, you have to understand, the only games I had really played before this were on the Atari 2600, such as Pitfall and E.T., and I had to go to a neighbor's house to play them. Yeah. And when you compare those to this, words couldn't even describe my awe. I mean, wow, it even had a story. So that's how I was introduced to the NES, with The Legend of Zelda. Little did I know back then how much this one game would change my entire life. It was so unique for its time. I mean, when you start the game, you don't even have a sword, and the game had no clear direction on where you should go. You would just explore, and that's what I loved about it. It encompassed every sense of the word adventure. Because of Zelda, I became an avid fan of all types of role-playing and fantasy games. I even wrote countless stories about lone heroes going off on their own, finding a sword, and facing unknown perils. I also became a huge fan of Nintendo and would go on to play countless other games. And even after those, I continued with the Super Nintendo, N64, GameCube, and even with the Wii today. But nothing else was quite like the original Nintendo. The games were just awesome. My parents had also bought me a subscription to Nintendo Power Magazine. Yeah, you want to be good at Nintendo? We'll get the power. Nintendo Power. I still have every magazine from the very first issue up until 2001 when I finally stopped subscribing. Every month was like Christmas when I would get a new issue, and I would read and reread all the articles and comics until the next one would arrive, even when I was going to college. I even participated in the contest they would have. If you look at volume 84, the one with Ken Griffey Jr. on the cover, and turn to page 93 in the arena section, you'll see that my name is printed for getting a high score. That's right, I was in Nintendo Power Arena, where only the strong survived. Ah, whatever. It was still kind of cool, I thought. So, that's just a little personal history of Nintendo and how it affected my life. But, you're not watching this video just to hear me talk about that, right? Nah, you want to see this. Yeah, that's right, this is the real deal. I finally finished the NES PC build. Let's go check it out. Now, before I turn it on, I need to hook it up, but that shouldn't be too big a deal. All I need to do is hook up an HDMI cable for the audio and video and plug the power in the back. Exactly the same spot you would plug it in for the original NES. So, about the system, the Zelda cartridge, as I showed in my part 2 video, houses the hard drive. And I didn't just pick the Zelda cartridge for its looks. I mean, this game introduced me to the NES, so it means a lot to me to have it showcase the build. I also put a rubber piece around the edge of the top window to make it look a bit sleeker. If you look at the bottom of the system, you'll see that I completely did away with the plexiglass and just left it open. In fact, I cut a bigger piece out of the bottom so that the CPU fan could properly exhaust heat. I also fitted nylon spacers on the original feet to give the box more clearance from the surface. All in all, it's a stable build. I also repainted the entire system, and here's why. This is another NES I have. Looks normal, right? Until you remove this piece, and look at the color difference. I mean, what in God's name happened to make it look so brown? Well, there's no way I could show off the system looking like ass, so I repainted it. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than putrid beige. Ugh. So now that you have an overview of the system, let's hit the power button and we'll see what it does. Oh, wait, I forgot. I don't have anything to control the box with. Well, this is a PC, right? So I would use a keyboard and mouse, but I don't see anywhere to plug in a keyboard or mouse. 
There's no USB connections. What the hell? No, that's right. The controller ports. Well, let's talk about those right quick. To stay with the retro look, I kept the original NES controller ports and wired them to the USB controller on the motherboard. This allows me to use any regular NES controller, including variations such as the NES Max or NES Advantage. So you could bring your very own NES controller over, plug it into this, and it would work just like it would on any regular Nintendo. Now that I've plugged in a controller, let's turn this beast on and see what happens. Now this is an Intel based system running Windows 7, but Windows has been modified and hidden to the point that you shouldn't notice any of the operating system parked. All you should see is the arcade front end that I've set up on the system. So I'll stop talking for a bit so you can watch this come up on its own and see it in its full glory. And there you go, the NES PC. So this is the front end I'm using called Hyperspin, and what you're looking at is a will-based menu of about 700 regular Nintendo games. So let me show you how it works. I'll try to hold the controller in front of the camera. So using the controller, you can browse through the games by pressing up or down on the D-pad, or you can hold down left or right on the D-pad to skip to a letter. I'll skip to the L's to show you one game. And there it is, Legend of Zelda. But I've talked enough about this game, so let's go find another one. Here's Life Force. I haven't played that in a long time. Now to start up a game, once you have it selected, just simply press the start button. And that's it. Then you just play the game like you would on a regular Nintendo. And if you hook up a second controller, you can use it to select a game as well from the menu, but it only works as the Player 2 controller inside the game, just as it should. And you don't have to turn the box off just to plug in or swap controllers. You can do it on the fly, even inside the game. Now to quit a game, simply press and hold the select button and then hit start. And you're now back at the menu. Now some of the games, as you've probably noticed, have their own themes. But so far I only have about 100 themes out of the total 700 games on the box. Most of the themes were created by others in the Hyperspin community, but I did create a few on my own. Here's a Metroid one that I made, and here's one of my favorite games of all time, Mega Man 2. Now for games that don't have their own themes, you still get a video in the box art of that game. And yes, every single game has a video and box art or theme to it. It took a crazy amount of time just to get all the will images, box images, and videos to each game. But anyway, to shut down the system, you can either hold select and push start to bring up the exit menu, or you can just hit the power button on the box itself. And there you go. That's the NES PC in a nutshell. Now some people have asked me, was any of this even worth it? Well, let's see. I learned how to Dremel, solder, I had to paint the box, that meant finding the right color, which meant trips to Lowe's, Home Depot, Sharon Williams, Hobby Lobby, and 20 cans of paint, learned how to make a vector graphic so I could repaint the NES logo, and yes, I had to freehand it, here it is on my desktop, wet sand, learned how to animate for the intro video, destroying a Zelda cartridge, suffering through design flaws, which meant more trips to Lowe's, Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, Fry's, Micro Center, Best Buy, eBay, and a motherboard death. Okay, so I might be dramatizing it just a little bit, but to give the short answer, yes, it was definitely worth it. In all seriousness, part of the reason I wanted to do this project was to challenge myself. I've learned a lot, and even amid the frustrations, I still enjoyed every bit of it. But the biggest reason for doing it is because this little box meant a lot to me when I was a kid, and it still does. 
The games are like stories to me, stories that I could be a part of. They dared me to imagine beyond the norm, to strive and dream beyond my own limitations. And it wasn't just the games, Nintendo itself was a revolution in the 80s and 90s. And to grow up during that time and to be part of that, even if just a tiny part, was incredible to me. So to all those that made Nintendo what it is, especially the fans, this box is my way of saying thanks. Well that concludes the NES PC Build Project. I gotta say, I'm glad I finally got it completed. You're probably asking yourself, so what's next? Well, I think for now, I'm just gonna sit back, relax, take it easy, and play a few NES games. 